Cine, kine, kini, kini, kinifinity. I must admit, I'm not a great fan of the name. It doesn't sound like a seriously aspirational piece of kit. I first heard the name Kinefinity when they started to produce a camera that I dismissed as just a cheap copy of a RED. It wasn't the way it looked, it was the whole form factor. It felt like a RED, but Chinese. Now, either I've seriously misjudged what Kinefinity were about, or they're very fast learners, because I'm starting to think I was wrong. Besides, we've got a new name now. The Mavo. The Mavo LF. And is it time to start taking the Mavo LF seriously? Ta-da. It still reminds me of a red, but in a good way. It looks like a serious piece of cinema tech. And it feels weighty and solid too. I'm looking at this camera because in a previous video I was wondering what camera I could get to replace my aging F5. And quite a few of you suggested that I take a look at Kinefinity. So this one's been lent to me by Pro AV, and it's their Pro package. So along with the Mavo LF body, you get the Kini back. That gives you all the inputs and outputs. A five inch Kini monitor. The Kini grip, nice hand grip with a battery inside, which means you can hot swap your V-Lock. A Kini mag, which is the 500 gigabyte solid state drive. All your cables and power, and even the Movcam cage handle and support. Strap a lens on the front and you could be shooting right away. For a fraction of the price of, say, an Alexa Mini LF or even the RED. And I mention those two cameras because when you look at the specs on the Mavo LF, that puts it right in the middle of their league. It's a full frame 6K sensor recording log to all flavors of ProRes right up to 444HQ or even RAW with Cinema DNG. And it records all this to standard SSDs that just slip in the side. Now I'm not going to sit here and read all the technical specifications that you can get online, but I will say that this is one of the most flexible camera systems I've ever tried. You can choose to shoot with any size sensor from Super 16 all the way up to full frame, and then pick a resolution from HD wide all the way up to 6K. So if you fancy shooting 3K on a micro four thirds size sensor at 150 frames per second, not a problem. Or you could shoot 6K on a full frame sensor at 75 frames per second, knock yourself out. Although you might want to consider buying a new computer at that point as well. Now, all of this looks great on paper, but I really need to go out and shoot some pictures with this. And I should warn you, I've never used this camera before. So this is an opportunity for us all to learn the best settings together. Well, there you go then. I am seriously impressed. The 
ProRes Log gives you loads of dynamic range. And I'm no color grader, but it was easy to achieve exactly the look that I wanted to. I really love the color science that Kinefinity have used in this camera. And the way it handles highlights, it reminds me of, dare I say it, the Alexa? I'm sure with a bit more practice, I would get much better at using the Mavo LF. But even so, the picture quality that you can achieve from this camera is seriously good. These are cinema quality pictures. And if that's what you want, this camera should be on your list. It's on my list. I just don't know how high up. You see, there are a couple of things that I do need to work around. Firstly, I was using the Canon EF mount. It's the adapter that fits on the front of the Kinefinity. They also make adapters for PL and Sony E mount. And the PL and the EF mounts also have an option of electronic ND, which would help a lot. But the problem I had was the time lag on the Canon EF when adjusting the iris. When you rotate the dial, there's a ridiculous gap before the lens actually moves, which usually means you've overshot the aperture you wanted. It's so bad, I would only consider using cinema lenses or anything that has manual iris control. But that's okay, because the Fujinon MK zooms would be ideal with the Sony E-mount, especially for those Super 35 type one-man band operations. The trouble is, I can't see a Sony E-mount adapter with an electronic ND. Maybe there isn't space. Secondly, don't even think of trying to use this camera without a proper viewfinder. This monitor is totally useless outside, especially if you're wide open on a full frame sensor at 6K. I believe there is a Kinefinity viewfinder and a seven inch super bright monitor coming soon. And you will want a package that includes those. Finally, the logic of which button does which is driving me mad. And I know I'm not being totally fair because given enough time, you can get used to almost anything. But for instance, remembering that pressing button four once to change the color balance and twice to change the resolution is not the easiest thing, especially when it's not highlighted on the side panel. So you have to use this monitor, which you can't see outside. Now, I know I'm not being very fair here. I'm criticizing this camera for not being something that it was never designed to be. I'm looking for a replacement for a documentary or a reality type setup. And this camera is clearly a cinema camera and a very good one, even in low light. For seeing how the noise looks in the dark, I did my usual test on the beach. With its dual ISOs, it's really clean and very usable in low light. The Mavo LF also does some very respectable slow-mo. Obviously for the really high frame rates, you have to drop the sensor size just so the data keeps up. But even at Super 16, it looks really good.
So this Mavo LF is very close to being my perfect camera. It produces wonderful pictures at a very reasonable cost. Just give it internal NDs, a proper viewfinder, and let me program the buttons myself, and it would be top of my list. As it is, it is on my list. It's just somewhere near the middle. But what I have learned is don't dismiss the Chinese camera just because of a silly name. That would be silly. Thanks for watching.